Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to jump headfirst into a topic that's going to save you time and material on your multicolor 3D prints. We're going to take a look at ways to cut down the waste material or the poop as we've affectionately have come to know it in the 3D printing community while transitioning from one color to another. So get ready, open your favorite slicer, and let's cut the poop. But before we get started, I want to thank PCB Wave for sponsoring this video. Explore PCB Wave's 3D printing portal. Easily upload your STL file and choose from a spectrum of exotic filaments for that special project. From PCBs to 3D prints, press PCBWay.com for unmatched quality and innovation. While you're on their website, take a moment to help celebrate PCB Way's 11 years of unstoppable progress. Visit them today at PCBWay.com. The first thing we're going to look at is the flushing volume. We can reduce a good chunk of waste right here. Now, if you've ever used a printer with multiple filaments like the Creality K2, uh, the High Combo, or any of the bamboo printers, then you probably already heard a little bit about flushing volume. But what is it? How can you use it? And why does it matter? Now, when switching from one filament to the next, say from red to white, some of the old color, in this case the red, stays inside the hot end. Flushing volume determines how much filament, the white, your printer pushes through to purge the old color out so that you'll get a clean transition. You don't want to have the bleeding. Um, you don't want to have fades. You want to make sure that you'll get a clean transition. Now, we can control the amount of material purged through the flushing volume dialog box. Most popular slicers have this, and since all these slicers are forks of each other, they're almost all identical in operation. If you're printing with multiple filaments on a printer with a single extruder, and your slicer does not support this, you should consider switching slicers. Now, where do we find it? Well, in Bamboo Studio, you'll find it right up here. In Orca Slicer, very similar, right here. And in Creality Print, we come over here to the right side up at the top, and we have this little faucet, and that is our flushing volume. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's take a deeper look into what the flushing volumes dialog box is telling us and what we can do with it. So the first thing we, we notice is across the top, we have four columns representing each of the columns that are loaded in the CFS or the AMS if you're on uh, a bamboo. Now, coming down, we have four rows, same colors. And what we're doing here with this information is we're, we're switching from red filament to say the beige this 889 is actually 889 millimeters cubed and that's how much filament it's going to take to purge the red out of the hot end so we're going to be using 889 millimeters cubed of the beige drive all that red out so we get a clean transition now if we were going from the beige to the red we're only using 506 millimeters cubed. And the reason for that is because we're going from a lighter color to a darker color. And anytime you got the lighter color to a darker color, you're always going to use less filament. Now, what you can do with these is actually change the numbers manually. And you can see I get an error on that because I'm way too low, which makes sense. So I could come back up here and hit recalculate. And it puts me right where I was, 506. Um, you can actually go through and try other numbers if you want. It's not the way I do it, but hitting the recalculate, that should throw us back up. But with 400, and just click on another thing. 400 might actually work, but if we'll go back to what the default is. Because what we're going to do next is come down to the multiplier. So when we go up to the multiplier, I can go ahead and I can hit one and then recalculate. And you see how it adjusted all my numbers. So if I go back to 
recalculate and we're going to look at the red to the light blue just because it's easiest to find and we are looking at 880 millimeters cubed of flushing let's change this back to one and we'll recalculate and you see how we drop this significant amount and then that's how you save your material the smaller the number the smaller the poop how's that now the smaller the turd um go back and we'll set this at 1.3 which was our default we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll recalculate we're going to accept this i'm going to slice the plate and we'll take a quick look at what's going on we're looking at an hour and a half to print um we're looking at three 33 color changes and we're looking at a cost of a buck 20. So let's go ahead and print this out and we'll take a look at it and then we'll make some adjustments and we'll compare and see what happens okay so i'm looking at the block for my 1.3 uh, flushing volume for the multiplier and we got a nice clean stripe on the front I'm not seeing any bleeding down the sides none in the back everything looks as it should let's go ahead and weigh this and we're looking at seven grams not bad but let's take a look at the waste and see what we get with that um, my waste I included the purge block and we are looking at 36 grams that's a heck of a lot of waste all right let's jump back in and we're going to take it down to let's say 0.5 okay so let's come back into our flushing dialog box and we're going to change the multiplier from 1.3 to 0 0.5 and i'm going to hit the recalculate and you notice we drop down significantly going from the red to the beige the beige to the red didn't change a whole lot just a little bit but en enough so let's go ahead and we're going to hit okay we're going to slice this and we're still looking at an hour and a half which i don't agree with if we're using less material we should be using less time i think reality needs to step up the game on this bamboo studio orchid slicer they have this uh, uh correct on their end reality need to step it up our filament cost is now down to uh 67 cents from a buck 20. now down here you'll notice that we also have this warding uh the flush multiplier setting is too low um it's just a warning it's not something that's going to stop you but let's take a quick look so i'm going to close that out we're going back to our flushing volume and you'll notice all of our numbers are white but if i go down just say to 0.4 and actually before go ahead and recalculate you notice how some of our numbers are red that means we're looking at real problem areas right there and it's not going to work it wants us to stay in a range of 183 to 1200 which here we're down to 156 175 172 um yeah all these ones that are red are below the 183 Let's go ahead and cancel that out. Okay, so I have my block here, uh, the 0 0.5 uh, volume or multiplier on my flushing volume. And now you can see right away there's some serious bleeding down the side, some on the back, more on the other side. It's not a good looking print. Let's see what we get for the weight. I, I am expecting to get seven. Uh, let me try it one more time. Okay, yeah, seven. Uh, I was expected to get seven grams. I'm expecting all of my test blocks to weigh seven grams. Um, let's go ahead and weigh the waste. And like before, I'm including the purge block in there. And we're looking at 22 grams. It's a lot of waste, but it's way down from where we started with the 1.3 volume or uh, multiplier let's jump back in and pick something in between the 1.3 and the 0.5 you know what let's go with an even 1.0 and see what happens oh okay final test let's take this back up uh to 1.0 for our, our multiplier 
and we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at our 342 195 i'm um, just looking at what the numbers currently are and we'll go ahead and recalculate and wow we're way back up there when we go from the red to the beige and same thing when we're going from the beige to the red they, they climbed up pretty good we're probably going to be a lot closer to what we saw when we did the 1.3 multiplier. Well, obviously we would. But let's go ahead and we'll uh, print this out. And we'll see what's going on. It's telling us that our flushing multiplier is low again. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, it might be true, but I've seen a lot of times where that's a false message. But who knows? Let's take a quick look and find out. Okay, well, an hour and a half. Printing time again. I don't agree with that. Our printing cost is back up to a buck. Originally started at a buck twenty, so we're still lower. We're using less filament. Let's go ahead and print this out and see what we get. Okay, so I have my one point zero. I'm seeing slight fading down uh, down the side, some like bleeding. Both sides, nothing really on the back. I might be able to take care of this if I just went up in the walls. Uh, I believe I had four walls. Um, usually don't go more than six, but that'd be one way to cure that. But let's go ahead and see what the weight on, weight on that is. And we're looking at seven grams. So all of our blocks came out consistent. And I'm going to measure the waste. And we are looking at 33 grams. I believe we looked at 36 with the 1.3 multiplier. And I think it was 22 when we had the 0 0.5 multiplier. So we're right in the range where I thought we would be. That's all there is to it. Give it a try. Find out what works best for your printer and your slicer. Don't be afraid to experiment with the settings. It's all about reducing the waste, printing time, while delivering a great looking model. Remember. The lower the number in your volume, the less material you'll use, but you also risk the bleed. The higher the number, the more material you're going to use, but you're pretty much guaranteed to have a clean print. So you got to find that fine balance. Don't be afraid to experiment. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe.